Hi, I'm Stuart Thompson. I'm editor of Digital TV Europe. I'm here with Martin Bergenwall, who's SVP and head of product management at Verimatrix. Uh, Martin, we've been through a period of massive change recently, obviously. What are the main innovations in the way you see content being secured and helping to meet the challenges that have arisen from, from new forms of piracy? No, so uh, that's a good question. I think um, as a long-term trend, we have seen uh, uh, our customers moving more and more to the cloud. And I think uh, coming into this year, this really accelerated. And I think it really has to do with 2020 being a special year. And, and uh, maybe it's, uh, you know, now the, the values of having a cloud and, and uh, having somebody else to take care of everything on a 24 seven, not having to run your own data center. Maybe that really has become more important this year. So if I would highlight one thing, I think it's really the trend, the accelerated trend to move towards cloud and SaaS business. That's what we have seen. Okay. And what are the most important ways in which the security threat to content service providers has changed over the last couple of years and this year in particular? So um, with, with things moving to the cloud, at the same time, you also see um, the other thing is, you know, uh, going more from traditional broadcast, more into streaming. And, and, uh, and, and maybe in the past, uh, the, the threat on, on content piracy was more about somebody making a copy of a movie and, and then redistributing that copy. I think that still threat still exists, but with all the streaming, I, I see a new, maybe emerging uh, threat for piracy where there's a restreaming. So you have a stream that somebody is restreaming and, and maybe they do it with commercial intent. Uh, uh, we have seen, uh, you know, pirates that uh, offer a lot of restreaming of, of events where, where they, adver they, they use that with advertisements to actually uh, make money on those restreams. So maybe that would be that the, the, with the streams, it's, it's more, more about the restreaming, but still, of course, stealing and copying of the content, especially when it comes to Ultra HD 4K content that still remains a threat. Okay, um, what you mentioned the cloud um, previously, what role can the cloud play in helping content service providers better secure their, their assets and revenues? So, uh, um, yeah, I think I mean, uh, there are many good reasons and, and uh, why, why a cloud deployment, why, why buying security as a SaaS, why it makes sense. But I, I think if you look into the broad picture, security is a, is a dynamic space. Things change, you, you get new attacks, you get new types of piracy. And if you host everything on-prem and you, you, uh, you keep your servers up and running, there's a lot of work to make sure that they are up to date, you have the latest patches, you make sure that you monitor for denial of service attacks, you, you do filtering of IP traffic and, and all of that. I, I think that if you get that as a cloud service, you let somebody else do that 24 seven for you and, and you, you need to worry less about all of the things that, is, that are changing because security and content protection is not like you do once and then you're, you're you know, happy. It's, it's, it's a process, it's something you need to do every day and it's something you need to keep up to date. And I think that's when you buy it as a service, when you buy it as a SaaS in the cloud, relying on a company, keeping that up to date. I think that's, uh, that's really helping here. Right, it so meets the, the challenges that, uh, that are arising, I guess. And, and what, some of the, the services that have, you know, blossomed, I guess, um, over the last few years, but particularly, I guess, this year, include things like live streaming on one hand and premium VOD on the other. So what impact has the live streaming sort of revolution and of premium events and, and also the development of premium VOD services had on the piracy threat and the technologies that are being used to combat uh, that threat? Oh, that's, uh, that's a good question. And um, so we, uh, I, I would highlight one technology here, and that is watermarking. We have had watermarking as a product uh, existing for, I don't know, more than 10 years, 10, 15 years. And we have had a usage of watermarking, but it's always been like, you know, not huge. It's been like, you know, for really premium movies. I think with the shift of, of movies uh, going from, you know, early window from, from cinemas to home streaming, and also more and more value being in, in live sports, in live events, I think the demand for watermarking has really increased. So we, that's, uh, I mean, I, I was just looking, um, I think last week I was looking at opportunities and normally we, you know, we talk to about uh, maybe 10 companies at, at any given time about watermarking opportunities. Right now we are talking to 50 or to 60 companies about watermarking. There's a big change that has happened in the demand and, and 
let's say, in the interest of, of, of watermarking as a mean to protect streams and, and content. And I think it's driven by, by the live events and by the, by the, the more the premium VOD that, uh, that the content owners want to put an extra level of protection. Watermarking is, is yeah. key to that, great. Yeah. And finally, the, the range of devices that people are using to consume video and, and the scale of the use of those devices has expanded dramatically. Um, what security innovations are coming up that can help address that rapidly changing environment where people are using more and more different devices to, to consume video? Yeah, so uh, I, I think um, it's, of course, it's in one way, it's... Um, it's a challenge from the security perspective because you get more and more endpoints that may may provide a, a, a leak from a, for for the content. But on the other hand, uh, we have seen um, uh, an increased demand for um, for um, application protection on on the end devices. So, protecting the software on those mobile devices or on the smart TVs on the on the web browsers, that's increasing. And I think that's really driven by the co content being consumed on. Not just a TV connected to a setup box, but uh, but on, on smart TV apps, on on tablets, on on mobile devices, and uh, and uh, and then that has driven the demand to do more protection on those. Not just DRM. DRM is really important to do the protection, but you need more than DRM to really fully protect. And and I think the app shielding technology, where we protect the apps, um, make sure that they are not modified. We can check that the apps are not running on a rooted phone. We can check about things that are indicating a, you know, somebody doing a piracy on the video. I think that that's uh, that's coming up uh, on our radar. Right. There's uh, a lot, a lot of to a lot of moving parts and a lot to 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 be aware of. Yeah. But uh, great. That's very interesting. Thanks very much, Martin, for for those insights. And thank you very much. And goodbye. Thank you very much. Thanks.